You're watching the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Today's show is sponsored by Mint Mobile. They are changing the game when it comes to cell phone plan coverage with plans starting at $15 a month. Start saving some money today at mintmobile.com slash chatsports. It's the type of savings you want as opposed to, you know, the savings that Catboy likes. It's event session today. I know it because we're filming this on Monday after the Cowboys disaster week one. I will be respectful, I promise you. Super Chat, $5 from Will Marshall. As mad as I want to be, really can't because all of this salt's coming except Jerry and Catboy. No one is scared of our receivers. O-line is a mash unit. Every time Will Super Chats, I feel like I agree with him, and I agree again. This was our nightmare, our, our concern, our fear, right? That the Cowboys would not be good on the offensive line because of all the replacements there. That they would not be good at the receiving core. That's the concern to me. That this Cowboys overall roster took a significant step back. And they absolutely did. And that's a huge concern for me. And it's, it came true in one game. And now it's even worse because you had more injuries. From Just the King, $2 from Chad, I think Huntley could be a good short term option. I'm assuming Tyler Huntley, the, the Ravens quarterback, is he though? He's a good athlete, and that gives him a nice floor as a backup quarterback. He's not a starter. Like, he wasn't that good for the Ravens. I know ESPN pitched him. I would feel great if he's your backup quarterback overall, but he's not, not going to be a great starter for you. By the time he gets into the offense and learns it, now you're three games in. I am of this mindset. There is no quarterback out there, even though Huntley is better than Cooper Rush and Will Greer and whoever else you go out and consider adding, or in most cases, everyone, anyone else out there. There's no quarterback that drastically changes your playoff chances, maybe even improves them at all, because your entire offense is bad. You were bad with a top 10 quarterback at Dak Prescott, who played terrible, to be clear, in week one. Not going to get any better just by changing out for a lesser QB. Ten dollars, Dwayne Porter. I had us nine and eight without Dak or with Dak. Without Dak, three and fourteen. Unless we score points, defense will get exposed against the run game. The Joneses are getting what they paid for. Thanks, Catboy. I agree with a lot of this here. I had him at ten wins uh, with Dak, and I, they looked pretty bad in Week One, and made me worried about it overall. Depending on when comes Dak, maybe Dak comes back. Maybe you can win five, go on a little late season run, and hurt your draft stock. But I don't have any faith in this offense without Cooper Rush. I don't. I, I am very concerned about them. I don't think they're going to be good enough. Like, Rush can do a little bit of game managing stuff, but your, your guys weren't getting open in week one. Gallup coming back will help that. If the supporting cast plays better, the results will be better. But I got no faith in this offense right now, unless Cooper Rush magic is actually a thing. So predict the Cowboys record for me. Overall season, knowing Dak's going to miss six to eight weeks, somewhere in that range, what will be the Cowboys record? This is the pinned comment on today's show. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Kenneth Easley, how does this situation in 2018 differ from now when Dallas traded for Amari? Does it? I don't know if it does. Um, like, like, there's like your receiving core. You're going to get back Gallup. And Lamb and Gallup is better than what you had. But I think a big difference is you were trying to figure out how good your quarterback was. I think you know how good he is. You're now worried about the availability of your quarterback long term. I think that is a huge, it is for me, it's a huge red flag. And you love Jason Garrett. You don't love Mike McCarthy as a head coach. Andres Gonzalez, another super chat. Trade for Lockett. That would help. Um, but I am not in the, I, I'm not trying to get assets right now. I, I think I, I, like player assets. If I'm doing anything, I'm selling. I'm not trying to trade away a second or a third round pick for a, a great receiver. Don't get me wrong. Lockett's awesome. But it's not going to fix everything. There's too much wrong right now with your offense. There's no thing as a one-player fix. I mean, even like Mahomes might fix it. But like even then, you still are maybe going to win 10 games because you're supporting cast and offense is terrible. Jeremy Gray. What is the maximum number of games with Cooper Rush and or an outside quarterback you think the Cowboys can win, I think is what you mean. Look, the, 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 the six to eight weeks is how much Dak's going to miss. I think you're looking at maybe, if you're lucky, two or three. Like, best case scenario, I think you're at 500 under the bye, and that's four wins? No way. Bengals, Giants, Commanders. 
uh, Rams, Eagles, Lions, Bears, all those teams look better than you did in week one. Low bar to clear, I know. But I think you're going to win two or three. And now you're two and six. <laughs> That's not going to get it done. It's really not. Now, what does get it done is Mint Mobile. Unlimited talk and text, high-speed data for plans starting as low as $15 a month. They run, by the way, on the largest 5G network. If you have not made the switch, now is the time. It's saving money in the good way. Unlike the Cowboys front office, unlimited premium wireless with plans starting at $15 a month. Mintmobile.com slash chat sports. The link's in the comments section and in the description. Mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Mark of Spain. Peeps call me a hater. It's a $10 super chat, by the way. One player was equal to the hype. That was Micah Parsons. Tolbert can't beat out a lame Noah. Didn't hear Sam, Osa, Fowler, Neville, or Vanilla Gorilla's name once. Hype. Uh, I'll go player by player here. Obviously, Parsons was awesome. Uh, Sam Williams played. Six sacks. Osa, I actually thought six snaps. Thank you. I thought Osa played pretty well on the interior. Um, he had a couple nice run stops, a couple pressures overall. I thought he was fine. Not great, but if he's like your number three lineman with, you know, with Parsons and Tank, you should be okay-ish. Uh, Neville Gallimore didn't really do all that much. Dante Fowler, he was silent. He played 10 snaps. Terrell Basham out time before he got hurt. Uh, John Ridgeway wasn't active, and Tolbert wasn't active. Tolbert couldn't be at a rookie UDFA. To have your second and third round picks play six snaps total in week one at obvious positions of need because you took them in the second and third round, that's bad. Jeff Bledsoe, need receiver help, O-line help, and at least short-term quarterback help receiver doing anything. I don't know. Honestly, I'm fine if they don't. Because here's my mindset. Maybe this is crazy, but I'll make the pitch anyway. If you are worried about your depth at receiver, at quarterback, and offensive line, then do something about it, specifically at QB. There's two ways to handle it. Either have a good backup in place or just don't care because if your starter goes down, you're screwed anyway. So I think the worst thing this team could do is say like, yeah, we thought the, the backup quarterback spot was bad, but we didn't do anything to, to fix it until it was too late. That's the worst case thing you can do. So look, I don't have any faith in Rush. The receiver help is bad. The O-line depth is bad. We knew all of those things. So if you want to make changes now, you're kind of too late. You missed your boat in the offseason when you actively chose to make your roster worse. And that's why when I'm putting, putting blame, there's been one constant for 25 plus years with this franchise. And the last name of that is Jones. Jerry and Steven now. They made this team worse. And they, they made their bed. The receiving core lost talent. The O-line lost talent. They did not support a franchise like any other organization does. When you're paying a quarterback big money, you put pieces around them. They're like, ah, oh, we'll see what happens. Now they, get, they are reaping what they sowed, and it's bad results, and it's injuries, and it's not good. Now, if you have not already hit that big red button, we will, that's a tr tricky transition there, we'll be here all year long. Good and bad, I will vent with you. We all want the same thing, actual wins. <sighs> but I don't trust it. Hit that big red button, subscribe, free videos every single day. Maddox Bats, think the Cowboys will rush Dak back? Probably, yeah. Uh, that would not surprise me if they try to rush him back from injury. And the, the, it, it's, it's going to be a can you grip the football thing. You know, we'll see. And that could lead to even more errant throws if the thumb strength isn't quite right. Mark Havis, Spain, again, a $5 super. Our middle D was facing three backups, still could not dominate. Our backup tackles were so bad, we needed to get Peters. All this cap space. JJ is a clown. Uh, Shaq Mason's a starter and was going to be a starter for them, but yeah, the, the rest were backups. They're, they have some pretty big injury stuff going on there. Um, again, the quick the Bucks game plan was so much better than Dallas's. Now they weren't, you know, shooting themselves in the foot on first and ten. Now it's first and fifteen because your right tackle's a spaz and can't not false start because the penalties are a problem, Mike. But they ran the ball really effectively. Quick, easy passes. How many times was there a ah, easy throw for Brady? Versus how many easy throws were there for Dak? You're running these, these deeper routes. 
You're asking your receivers to get open or make super tight window throws. Run a pick play one damn time. Run mesh once. It's apparently not in the playbook, and I don't know why. It's easy stuff to get the ball to your playmaker, CeeDee Lamb, and see if good things happen. Just doesn't exist, apparently. Jeremiah Early. This mess was the Joneses' choice. We had the entire offseason, and again, they chose not to get talent. Better not waste draft picks now. Wild card? But why? To lose first round again? Let's get good picks. I don't know if you can get there. Uh, look, we'll see how the... I, I am hoping the offense looks better in, in week two. I have no confidence there. But you, you could have two wins. Like, honestly, if you're, if you're really bad when Dak is cleared to come back, just sit him. Just tank. Say there was a complication or whatever, which you maybe don't want to do. But, you know, say you just want to get him healthy. You're not worried about it. And tank. Like, it, it, uh, you, are, you are in a real spot where after the bye, you could be out of, the, out of the race already. If that's the case, embrace it. Gamer mode. I say trade for DK. Help your backup win more games. Then Dak comes back making a run. Sounds super smart than what Jerry's been. Well, you're not wrong in the last part. The Seahawks just paid DK Metcalf, so you're, you're not getting him. If there's, a, if there's a Seahawks receiver out there, it's Lockett. But DK Metcalf is not available via trade. Rob John, what do you, what do you think our continued penalty problem says about McCarthy's ability to control the team? So there are two arguments. There are two, like, mindsets. One is that... Penalties are reflective of your coaching. And there's also an argument that, and it's obviously massively different opinions, it's that it's not the coach's fault that the player m made a mistake. And I don't agree, agree with that last part. I, I think it is a coaching problem. Because when it's systemic, when it is special teams, offense, and defense, that is assigned to me, it's a coaching problem. Either you're undisciplined, wh whatever you're doing, Mike, is not fixing your rampant penalty problem. You had 10 again last night. That's not good. And you had a bunch of false starts. It's not like it's, all oh, a questionable holding call. It was just, you messed up again. It's a problem every single week for this Cowboys team. It continues to be a significant problem from that standpoint. It, it, it's a huge issue. And you know what? If it is your players, then stop playing them. Like, this is not good. It's got to get fixed. So, boy, the Cowboys into fewer flags for me by typing in flags. Is it going to work? I have no idea. But everyone who types flags, I'm going to show you some love in the comment section because I believe it is a Cowboys problem. We can blame the refs if we want. It's got to stop. I've been bullied today on my own show. Now we're going to bully the Cowboys as well. Jeremiah Early again, $5. Thank you, my friend. $20 million in salary cap, and we didn't spend it. You, you get what you pay for. All we got is penalties again. Thank you, Jones, for a consistent 30 years. Look, you're not wrong, Jeremiah. You're not wrong. It's You had a bunch of money, didn't want to spend it, and you're paying the price for a lesser roster. The team got worse. Of course, the results are worse. That was our fear going in. We were really drinking Kool-Aid thinking, Noah Brown! Kellen Moore, Dak's going to be a top five QB every week because if you have a top, he has to look a top five QB to have a chance. That's asking a lot week in and week out, plain and simple. Mateo Meza, chances of McCarthy being coached next year? I don't know. All year leading up to week one, I'd said he's on the hot seat. If they miss the playoffs, he's gone unless there's a devastating injury. Here's your devastating injury. Um, I don't think they'll fire him before the end of the year. At least maybe until you're officially out of playoff race. But I have no faith in Mike McCarthy. Because that he made a big deal. We're going to fix the penalties. We've had three preseason games and a real one. Have the penalty issues been fixed? No. Did you come out with problems again in week one? Yeah. Have you made any offensive adjustments? No. Come on, Mike. Buck stops with you because we can't fire the owner, sadly. I don't think he's going to be here. Frankly, I don't want him here. A rare $8 super chat from Kenneth Easley. What is the difference between Blake Bortles and Leonard Fournette in the AFC Championship game or Blake Bortles and Ezekiel Elliott right now? Uh, the Jags got lucky. Jags got lucky. Like, they had a great defense that carried them. They they won some games. They had decent coaching. It was Honestly, it was a fluke year. Like, the difference is look at everything else Blake 
Bortles did. That's the difference. <laughs> He's done nothing. And even that one year, he kind of got bailed out by actually a decent offensive line and a lot of luck involved. The difference is Bortles is not good. That's the difference. Jer uh, Jerome Nichols, race the number one pick, flip it for multiple draft picks, offensive line, wide receiver. So I don't mind if you end up tanking. And I think if you have the number one overall pick, or if you're drafting top three, top four, whatever, all options should be on the table. You should consider taking a, an, an edge rusher, taking an offensive lineman, taking a receiver if there's good ones, but maybe not top three, whatever, taking that Jalen Carter, Will Anderson kid. And you should consider taking a quarterback because it's been three years now. And Dak has had four noteworthy injuries that have cost him significant time. Cowboys might not say he's injury prone. How can we not be worried about that? He's great when he's out there. Obviously, he played like shit week one. I get that. But overall sample size, he's been great. It's the Romo situation all over again. You got this great QB. Your supporting cast fails them. The Jonas are your owners. But now the body is having issues. I don't know if I trust him to stay healthy. And if I don't, I owe it to myself to consider going with a quarterback early. And remember, guys, that's me saying it. Jeremiah early, again, a $5 super. My fear is Dak comes back and they try to win. Get us close 500 in a mid-first round pick. That does nothing to the same that, uh, the year Dak was out. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, you're going to, I think you win a couple games without Dak. Once Dak comes back, there's a lot more easy, w more winnable games on the schedule. It was always kind of a front-loaded, challenging schedule. You could come back and go, you know, 5-2, and two, whatever, with Dak healthy. 4-3. and three. That's very doable. It's not going to make you a, a playoff team unless you get the Cooper Rush magic again. But it might cost you a draft pick. That's a concern for me. Now, if you have more Cowboys venting sessions, whatever... Hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. My DMs are open, which I've regretted so far. But any and all questions, I've got you guys covered over there.